Good evening, everyone, and welcome to July's edition of the Ancan Art Friends. As always, we are super excited to have you here, and we have a great art project tonight. Hannah, we've had, just, just for the recording, we've had some behind-the-scenes talk about travel and art museums, and we've had a comment that this this painting, this masterpiece, if you will, reminds them of the Tour de France. So tell us your inspiration. Tell us what we're going to be doing. And we are so excited. Thank you so much, Alexa. Um, well, I did have Vincent van Gogh on my mind. So very similar region. In fact, he did paint some in France, but also Denmark as well. Um, so, of course, I did look up Vincent van Gogh paintings because I love his use of um, of the was it the, the way he he lays out the background and the landscape. That's what I was looking at in particular. But I also wanted to be able to showcase our uh, our sunflowers because um, it's it's summer. Right. Why not have some sunflowers and paint some sunflowers? So I'm going to dive right into it now. Um, I hope you guys are excited as I am. So I have here some paper that I'm working on. However, we're using acrylic paints. You're more than welcome to um, switch over to a canvas if that's what you want. However, the reason I decided to use paper instead of canvas um, for me is just because we have also the use of oil pastels too, but it can be done either way. So um, we have the, the acrylic paints that we'll be using on the background and to get our, our flowers started. So we'll get them started. And then later on, we'll be adding the oil pastels to refine our shapes. And we'll also um, add the oil pastels to do the clouds as well. So mostly the outline of the flowers and again, refining the shapes of the flowers and then adding the sky up at the top. So here are the colors I'm gonna be using. We have some sort of blue for the sky. So I have here a pretty light colored blue. Um, however, if you happen to only have a dark color blue of some sort, then you can start off by mixing your blue or actually mixing white with a little bit of blue because usually the, the blue colors are pretty strong. So white with a little blue. Um, if not, you can just go straight for some sort of light blue. And we also have a um, green color here. Now, I couldn't find the exact green that I used, but that's okay. I have a light green, so I'm just going to use a light green. That's all we want, some sort of light green. So let me set this aside. We also have um, some white paint as well. We are going to want to mix our white paint with our yellow whenever we do our flowers, start to do our flowers. So white and yellow. And then an optional two other colors, just totally optional. But I have here an orange, which you're also more than welcome to mix in with your color, just to give it that really bright, like darker orange feel. It's just enough to tint it just a little bit. It's barely anything, honestly. If you want to, I also have something called King's Gold. It's more of like an ochre or like a honey mustard color. Um, that's also an option as well that you can use for your flowers. But if you don't want sunflowers at all, then you can use whatever color you want, okay? I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to tell you what to do, okay? I'm here to use suggestions. You're welcome to use any color you want for the flowers if you don't wanna do sunflowers, okay? Um, later on, after we put our flowers in here, we're going to go ahead and create all of our foliage at the bottom. So this is just a bunch of random grasses, random weeds, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll start to paint it in down here much, much later. This is one of the, the last um, things that we'll do. And then also, again, we'll refine our, our grassy shapes and uh, flora, I guess. Um, along with the other oil pastels that we use to outline our, our shapes of our petals. And speaking of oil pastels, I have a good set here. I mean, you don't need to have anything fancy. You really don't. Just your basic colors is all you need. We're gonna use purple and white for the, for the clouds. Um, I do have a little bit of teal back here, a little bit of like a really light blue back there as well just like some swipes here. And then I also have 
like a, a lighter orange just to outline my, my flowers. I have a brown. So we're not going to be using too many colors in terms of um, like a variety of colors. We're mostly sticking to our sunflower colors and whatever we've got here. Um, unless, of course, you're doing any color flower that you want, which, again, you're more than welcome to do that. As far as brushes are concerned, I have here a flat brush. So this is just a larger flat, flat brush. It's, it's about three quarter inches. And I'm gonna use this just for the background. That's, only, that's the only thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna paint the sky and we're gonna paint the meadow here and then that's it. Um, the real magic comes with the round brushes. So every set, every, uh, every paintbrush set is gonna be a little bit different. We just want some sort of medium sized brush or maybe a small brush to help us paint all of these little flowers. Um, so something that it feels comfortable really, I can't really like say exactly. I have this size one, so I'll probably be using a little bit of that in addition to this size eight. So this one's a much larger one. Um, I tend to be a little heavy handed. I don't know if you are, but I tend to be a little heavy handed, so my, my brush strokes um, turn out a little bit big sometimes. Um, so you can use the smaller one in that case. As long as it's pointy, you're fine. Um, water and napkins, we're gonna want those. The oil pastels, they tend to, to get on our fingers, so I'll probably be wiping my hands on my napkin every once in a while. Did I miss anything? I think I got it all. Do you guys have any questions? I can go over the colors list again, whatever you want. So if you don't have questions, we're going to begin. Well, Hannah, I am no clairvoyant, yes. but I am predicting that this will be hung up on many walls. This, I think, is going to be I sure great. hope so. So that's my two cents. Yay. Yes, I really hope so, too. Um so let's get started. I actually wanted to show you another version that I made because I always like to show you uh, things like that. Um, where did I put it? Here it is. Okay. I know that not everybody has acrylic paints. Um, if you don't have acrylic paints, it can absolutely be done with watercolor too. Um, so I put, I made this, the sky with watercolor, and I also made the, um, the, the meadow with the watercolor. So the base of the, the green with watercolor. Um, I created the flowers using the oil pastel, oil pastel only. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there just in case you don't have any acrylic paints, you can absolutely do this with watercolor and oil pastel too. And conversely, if you don't have oil pastel, say maybe you only have acrylic paints. Um, whenever we, we start refining the shapes of our flowers, you can just take one of those tiny brushes. So whatever is your smallest brush, you can start to outline whatever I would outline with uh, the oil pastel. So the outline of the flower, um, all of this down here can be done with just the acrylic paints if you need to, okay? I, want, I don't want you to feel like you have to go out there and spend some extra money. Now, any more questions? Let's do this then. All right, so I also have here um, a paper plate, paper palette, I should say. So let's go ahead and take that out. Let's go ahead and pour some of our colors out. Um, we're going to start off with our blue and our green first. We don't need a lot, honestly, because we're, we're going to water these colors down quite a bit. So you don't need a lot at all. I'm just going to start off with a couple, couple dots there. Because again, we're watering it down. The reason I'm watering it down is because we want to be able to spread it further, faster. A little bit. Got my purple side here. Got my flash. flash. And mix a little bit of that with some white paint. Okay, so make a, a lighter blue. This is your chance to do that now. We'll start off with the sky. 
And I want to show you the edges here. I happen to absolutely love those loose edges. The fact that they're not um, quite to uh, reaching every single edge here. Um, I happen to love the way that looks, but you're more than welcome to um, completely cover the entire page if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to be doing that, though, because I want to keep those edges. So I'm going to get my water. And I mentioned that we're going to water our paint down. So I have a good amount of water that I'm taking straight from my cup. It drips down a little bit, so I'm going to carry those drips to my palette here. And let's take this aside. Let's kind of take some of our paint here. I'm moving my brush back and forth, kind of wiggling it around, even, even on, on the back side there, flipping it back and forth. It's pretty soupy. We're looking for soupy. Maybe a lot, maybe not like a chicken soup, maybe like a thicker soup, if you want to think of it that way. Like a bisque, perhaps. Like a, a bisque. That is perfect. Let's get a bisque. Bluey bisque. Then we're going to take our color. And my brush has a lot of paint on it. See that? That paint is going to help us to move further faster. And I'm going to swipe it from side to side here. Just barely reaching the edges, if even at all. See that? Side to side, kind of kind of curved a little bit. And once I run out, I can always go back to my palette and grab some more. Continue on downward. Now, personally, I need to water this down some more. I need some more. So I'm going to take my scoop of water again, carry that over to my plate here. Mix it all in with some more of my paint and then carry on. We're going to reach, I don't know, maybe about the midway mark. Just continuing. If you had to leave it for a moment like I just did to, to mix some more of the paint, then it would help to overlap where you left off. Go over these spots again and again. Eventually, I'm flattening out my brush so that it's not quite curved anymore. It's, it's more uh, horizontal. I've gone a little bit below the, uh, the midline, but that's okay. That's totally fine. It is totally okay to go back and forth and move up a little bit. That way you can smooth out some of those lines. However, it is really nice if you keep some of those lines um, streaky because it's, it's just a nice textural effect. That's all. Any questions so far? Excellent. Beautiful. In a moment, we will move into our green. Um, I'm not going to rinse my brush simply because that tiny amount of blue that's in there is gonna look really nice with the green that we have. Let's see, I think I changed my mind about that green. I think I like that green. I'm gonna switch over to this green. I have a question. Um, I don't have green and I had to make the light white blue. Is this now what I'll be using instead? Um, the let me see if I can find you real quick. Um, okay. Can you repeat your question, please? Um, so you sh you shared that if you earlier that if you don't have green, you can make um, a lighter blue with the white acrylic and mixing them. So I made two different blues. So yeah, is yeah. Now, so is this now when I'm going to use the lighter blue or just basically use my other blue because I don't have green? Oh, okay. So you don't have the green then. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a, some yellow? No, I have orange like a magenta i mean i can do like a like a pink color like a a light light mm -hmm. pink or i'm because i'm wondering what you can do with the with the 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 meadow now since we're going to do like this portion the the grassy area well, um, I have watercolor, so at least but oh. i'm using the acrylic too so i guess okay 
if you have watercolor, actually, I you can absolutely bring the watercolor out and use the green from the watercolor. Okay. Yeah, it'll it'll be totally fine that way. <laughs> Good. Any other questions? And Hannah, you also can say that it's a mixed media piece at that point. That is it's, very it's, true. It's a multi <laughs> Uh, supply project which sounds really cool <laughs> oh yes like it became a mixed media project as soon as we added the oil pastels to it um okay guys let's move on to our meadow now we're going to do the green so if you if you don't have green and you happen to have like a yellow and blue you can mix those two together and you'll make a green just throwing that out there or of course um, like what just happened. If you want um, watercolors, you can absolutely um, throw your watercolors in there as well. Just like with what I did with the, the second example. They end up looking pretty similar. Now, I'm gonna take my green. I decided I didn't like the light green, so I'm gonna move over to this darker green here. And again, I also wanna water it down. So I'm gonna take my brush and grab some water and bring it over to my plate here. And once again, flip it over again and again, work it in there. I've got a teensy bit of my blue coming out to mingle with the green and that's okay. You want a little bit of that mixing. Now, my brush is very saturated now I'm actually gonna overlap some of this blue because I'd like a little bit more space for, for my greenery. So I'm overlapping it. And it'll, this'll be a nice little mixture of colors too. And once again, I'm going to take this, move all the way down. Now I need to make some more, so I'm gonna do that. Making some more. Continue all the way to the bottom. And again, if you have streaks, if you're seeing some streaks in there, that's absolutely fine. It's nice to see some streaks. It's very painterly to have it that way. You are more than welcome to rinse your brush after that. and then set it aside too, because we're not gonna use this one again. We do want to give our, um, our meadow a little bit of time to dry before we start the process of putting in our, um, our flowers after this. So go ahead and finish that up. So I'm thinking, I'll start you off on the flowers and then we will go ahead and jump up a little bit and we'll start to put um, some of this. This is supposed to be flowers that are way in the back. Um, there's so many flowers that you can't distinguish one from another. So all the colors blend together. So that was the idea behind all of these very loose brush strokes in the back. Now, of course I have yellow because this is a sunflower field. Um, but again, you can put little dots of, of other colors if you want to intersperse them randomly out there. You're welcome to do that too. I might do that. Maybe I'll throw in some uh, some orange flowers in there. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. We will spend a good amount of time uh, painting our flowers because we have so many flowers. We have a lot. So we'll spend some time on that. If you happen to have like a little desk fan nearby or maybe like something that you can use to um, like maybe blow some air on your picture to dry, we're looking for the green part to dry a little bit more. And then we can begin. And it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna take too much longer. Maybe just like a minute or two. Now, this is the part of class where I love asking if anybody's done anything creative throughout the week. We already heard a little bit about Kim's adventures at the Louvre, looking at art. Um, who else though? Has any did anybody else have something to share? Whether you looked at art, made art, um, wrote a poem, did you write a poem? Did you do something creative um, 
uh, in the kitchen? Like, did you make something different? I consider that creative. Like, I love like taking different spices and uh, making my own little mixtures of things. And then I remember, then I forget uh, what I actually did. So I don't really um, remember how to recreate <laughs> the recipe. <laughs> yeah. No good there. <laughs> I think mine, I think mine is pretty good. If you can touch it and like maybe just off to the side here, if you can touch it and it doesn't feel too wet, I think you should be good. We will be using our um, round brushes this time. And I'll, I'll use two different sizes. So I'll use that, that larger one and then one of my small ones. It's really nice because we I don't usually bring out the, the tiny brushes. Now I am going to start to pour out some of my paints now. So I, I'm going to want some yellow, of course. Now, the way this works is that we're going to want to put a base coat of whatever color your flower is. So for me, yellow um, mixed with white, your color plus white. And we want that base color there because if we didn't have it, we would end up um, seeing green flowers everywhere or green tinted flowers everywhere. So that little bit of white helps it to stand out from the background. So we'll put that base color there and then we'll go back later and put a second coat of our pure color. So you don't have to mix any white with it. So here's what I mean. I'm going to draw a, or paint a big flower so that you guys can see what I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to take some of my color here. No need to grab water if you haven't already. And if you did, that's fine too. And then I'm gonna take some white, mix it in. We're looking for a light yellow. Now I like to twirl my round brushes around the paint mixture so that it, it mixes within the uh, the paintbrush. Again, this is my base color. If we didn't have this base color, then everything you put on there would be tinted green. So we're gonna try to avoid that. Now our flowers, they have a center. And usually I like to um, try uh, painting the center. However, this time I actually put the center in with oil pastels. That means that we're not gonna put that brown part in there just yet. Right now they're gonna look like just pure yellow flowers. They're not gonna have a center. Um, I am, however, going to paint a dot there. And all of my dots will have a petal going to the dot. Each of my petal is a brush stroke. So I'm gonna be moving my picture around just to make it a little easier for me to reach that dot. Now, once you do five, 10 of these flowers, um, it's gonna become a lot less, um, what's the word? tedious, I guess, like, cause you'll, you'll get the hang of it. And I'm not, I'm not going to try to count how many petals there are. I made that dot and I'm just going to keep swiping. Notice how my brush is pointing outward. Personally, I feel like it's a lot easier to keep that classic petal shape if you have it pointing out and away from your dot. But that's just me. You might find it easier to do it the opposite way. I want you to, um, if you're having, if you're having a harder time making these particular brush strokes, then try to switch it up a little bit and say maybe you make your dot. Maybe try to move outward instead. See if that helps you. So right here, I'm moving outward 
this doesn't feel natural to me personally, so that's why I don't usually do it. You can kind of see the difference. So that's why I like to point them the, the other way, the opposite direction. I have lots of flowers and I made them uh, mostly down this area. <clears throat> Let me show you the difference between these. There's still a good amount of space up here. So I would say maybe that's three fingers, maybe four fingers of space up here. Good amount of space. So most of my sunflowers or flowers are gonna be down here. Got a good amount of space up at the top here. So we're just gonna take our time making each and every one of these petals. Move your picture around little by little. Switch your brushes up a little bit so that you get different sizes of flowers. Switch up the colors if you want. If you don't wanna, wanna see any more sunflowers, you can, you can switch it up and do another one. Do you guys have questions? Could you put water in the paint? I didn't, um, but it did cross my mind just to make it a little bit uh, less clumpy. Um, so here's what it looks like when you water it down just a little bit, if you want to see that. I don't know if that's what you're getting at. But I didn't water the paint down because I, um, I want it to be thick okay. so that I don't see as much as, as much of the, uh, the green underneath. I'll probably switch up to a smaller brush in a second here. Anna, is that a round brush you're yeah. using? Yes, yes. All okay. of our our, our brushes um, for the flowers will be the round brushes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll probably switch to my small round brush now so I can get some smaller flowers there. Take your time with it too. Any other questions? Hannah, can you show me your round brush? Yeah, I have. So I just switched over to the small brush, but I was just using this one. I'm cleaning it off right now. This one just now. It's a size eight. All right. I don't think I have a round brush because mine look like fireworks so far. <laughs> Oh, they're pointy. No, Is it not pointy? Not good. Not good. <laughs> do you so you have flat brushes then? Is that what I'm I do? Thinking? I don't think I have any round. Let me see. Let me look. That green one. You kind can of like it was take round. a rubber band and use it to create a different shape for your brush. Uh, that is an option. Maybe that is round. Yeah, that's a round brush. Um, okay. Could if just you be can. <laughs> Oh, you're good. You're good. Um, that one is, it is a thicker brush though. Um, it's around the same thickness as the size eight that I'm using. Okay. Like a, around that size. Okay. So, um, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, yeah, just keep on going with all your flowers. I might throw in like a pink one, maybe a few pink ones here and there. We'll get to refine the shape later whenever we put um, oil pastels on it. That's what they're for. That's why we have the oil pastels, so we can refine that shape. Because when I was doing it at first uh, in the original picture, my flowers, some of them kind of look like blobs a little bit. And I knew I had to do something to fix it. So that's what I did. Huh. I do want to try to smooth out some of the, the lumps here whenever I'm uh, painting. Whenever you can, at least. Those will take just a little bit longer to dry. Shouldn't be too bad, though. Oops. 
Yeah. Has anyone done anything um, fun in the last month? Besides trips to Europe. <laughs> I went and saw Tears for Fears in concert. Oh, in that's Virginia cool. Beach. All right. I'm jealous. That sounds amazing. Yeah. My friend went with me and he had very low expectations for Tears for Fears. And he actually ended up enjoying himself. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Take me to the Barbie movie tomorrow night, and she's like, Ooh. we have to dress up. So I'm going as retired Hawaiian Barbie and wearing a moo moo. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. That that's gonna get put on Facebook photo there. So <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna go see it on Saturday. There's uh apparently a Barbie brunch, so like at the movie theater, so they'll serve me food. Nice. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm gonna drink a mimosa. I think. I think the most dressing up I'm going to do is probably just like paint my nails. Maybe I'll wear like nice uh, sandals. I just don't have anything pink. That's the only thing. I don't think I wear pink. But I, I cannot wait for that movie. Can I show you guys my kitty cat in a cone right now? She's meowing at the door because she wants me to let her Aww, in so she can, course. so I can carry her. But she has a cone right now, um, because she got spayed oh. on uh on Friday on Friday. Oh, poor kitty! So she's kind of miserable, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get her. I'll be back. Oh. <laughs> And what is your kitty's name? What's your kitty's name? Her name is Callie. Big baby. Why is she in a cone again? She got okay. spayed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Say hi, Callie. Does she hate Good mommy show. right now? No, she, no, she loves mommy. She right loves now. mommy. I'm I'm the one who will cater to her whenever she wants her uh. neck scratched. I will cater to her and pick her up anytime she wants to be picked up. If you can see her face right there. Aww. <laughs> see? I'm trying to point her face to the camera. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say hi, little baby. There she is. Good girl, Callie. Very Poor nice, baby. Callie she, uh... break. <laughs> Poor little baby, she uh, she still still after six days doesn't know how to quite use her her cone, so gets it in the litter box and gets it all dirty. Is that right, Callie? There she is. Good baby. How are you, how are y'all's uh flowers going? Going okay? Yep. Good. <laughs> Beautiful. Can't wait to see him later. Okay, little baby, I'm gonna put you down. Good girl. I was watching this video this week on YouTube and they were saying that the first MS disease modifying drug was developed 30 years ago in 1993. 
wow okay that makes that makes sense then um that's pretty cool how things have changed since then oh yeah for the better now we have we have so many now yep i lost count a long time ago i always um i always try to do like little paid survey opportunities when 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 they send them to me right. and uh I always love to um, to see. Sorry, <laughs> I always love to see like when they put the list of drugs um, in list form, and it's such a huge list too. It blows it my is. mind. Yeah, it's over two dozen now. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. All right. So Kelly's just gonna hang up here while we paint. Now. Not sure where in the painting process you guys are at, but anytime you're ready, um, you can go ahead and start to go over your your painting. I'm sorry, go over your flowers with the pure version of your color. So for some people, that can just be like straight yellow, just straight from the tube, nothing special. Um, start by going over one of the ones that are uh, dry. So the very first one here, that's the driest. And all you do is go right on top of it. Now that's straight out of the tube. If you wanted to, I can show you guys how to make a different kind of uh, yellow so that it looks a little bit more rich. It looks a little bit um, more sunflower-like because I feel like sunflowers in their, you know, in the wild, real sunflowers, they have a, a slight orange tint to them. So that's why we have the orange here. So that's what it looks like when I go over it just with the yellow. So pure yellow with this one. So here, I'm going to show you guys how I mix um, a little bit of orange into my, my yellow. So I've got my color right here and I'm actually going to be mixing with my small brush. I feel like it's a lot better if I mix with a small brush. So there's that. And I just need to pour out a little bit of my orange. If you happen to have that other color that I mentioned earlier, that honey mustard color, so this one, it's it's got it's it's yellow, but it's got a brownish tint to it. Um, you're more than welcome to mix that in as well, or use that instead of the yellow too if you want. So I have here my yellow, and I'm just going to scooch this aside. So I'm going to mix just a small little pile. I never want to mix any colors into my main pile. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my orange and just mix a tiny bit of that, just enough to tint it. It's barely changing my color, but I, I like what it's, what it's creating, though. This little bit here. I like what that's turning into. I'm, I'll probably change it just a little bit by adding a little bit more. But that's You're probably using about it. Smaller round brush. Yeah, I think um, using the smaller round brush will will be better for mixing, so that you're not mixing too much. Oh, but for painting. Yes. Yeah. For painting um, each of the flowers. Okay. Yes. Now, once you have your color, go right back in. Do the process again. Paint right on top of what you already have. See if you can smooth out your paintbrush um, strokes as much as you can. See the difference in color here? One's just a little bit more orange than the other. Just gonna repeat the process.
Let me move my camera down so you can see Callie a little bit better. She's finally gotten comfortable. Is anyone doing any uh, different color flowers? Uh, Nobody? Hey, Hannah? Uh-huh, yeah. So we want to leave a little bit of the yellow shining through with the orange, right? Um, so or no. You mean like, so like like when you color or when, when you paint over it again, is that what you mean? Yes, ma'am. Um. I'm not really intending to do that. It's just so happening just, that way. <laughs> so cover it or Yeah, I would I would cover it, yeah. Okay. 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 And actually, whatever you don't cover up, the oil pastels will will get it afterwards. So I'm being I, very careful. I tried mm -hmm. to color but it's not working out. You tried which color? Uh pink because I Seen these pink flowers on my wall. Yeah. Yeah. You said you said it's not working out. No. <laughs> oh, man, that's so I, sad. It's okay. Um, if you wanted to cover them up, um, you can wait for them to dry, and then they have to dry completely though, and then you can right. go over it with some white paint. It's kind of like whiting them out. Like right. Know. Yeah, if you want to do that. Otherwise, you don't have to. <laughs> no, it's okay. Man. I actually had this pink right here that I've been wanting to use for a while now. It's called candy pink. Oh, candy. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use that because I'm really excited about it. That's pretty. Um, yeah, so I want to see what my painting would look like with... It's kind of Barbie. Flowers. It is kind of Barbie. It is. <laughs> it's totally on theme. <laughs> you do pink after all. <laughs> oh, I do love pink. I absolutely love pink. I just don't wear it that much. Oh, gotcha. Anna, are you going to dress yeah. up for the movie? I'm not going to, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll feel like it on the day. I'll send you my retired Hawaiian Barbie photo. Please, please. If it inspires you to dress up in a <laughs> different Barbie fashion. <laughs> <laughs> my my only thing is that um it's we're we're seeing it in the morning. So like I'm gonna be tired. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna go feel like a, dressing I, up in the Barbies, morning. Barbie's, you know, does everything. So you could go in your pajamas, sure. it's whatever. Oh, that's so true. Could be pajama Barbie. I could be pajama Barbie. I have, I do have some nice pajamas I could wear. I like that. I mean, I are you going drinking. with anyone else? Yeah, I'm going with um, my boyfriend Junior's sister and her best friend. Then you could go with like slumber party Barbies. We could. Okay, I love that. That's and then yeah, I that love is pretty that cool. idea. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna run it by them tonight because I wanna I wanna see what they say. Callie. Am I moving too much, little baby? Come on, little baby. She's like, Mama, stop moving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put some pink in there, see what that looks like. I like it already. Oh, yeah. Maybe I should put some yellow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See what, the, see what it looks like together with it. There's so many of the pink, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's already a lot. I think it could work for you. Let's uh, see. I'll need to balance it. Like I have to put some on this side, too. Yeah, no. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> That's okay. We'll First of all, we still the want to see it. <laughs> I think I want at least some of my flowers to overlap. 
I mean, maybe I'll have some of these pink flowers kind of overlap. Hannah, did you do anything to the pink color or was that just straight up the candy pink? I actually added some some white to it because okay. I still wanted to make that um, that base color, like the first first color. Because the white, it helps it to stand up against the green. So it does have the white mixed into it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I was so excited about the pink that I forgot to go over the other flowers with my pure color. So I have to do that in a minute. By now, most of my base color flowers are, are dry. So with some of them, I am going to go over it with the pure yellow. I just, I like this combination of colors. The original plan was to color all of them this kind of orangey yellow color, but kind of like the the mix with with the pure pure, ye pure yellow in there as well. After this, we will get our first um, first little bit of stems and grasses on the bottom here. So maybe in about four or five minutes or so, we'll start that at the bottom. That'll also give our flowers some time to dry too. We do want those to dry. Definitely want to smooth out these lines as much as possible. Look, I'm Done with the orange and yellow ones. Now I'm going to go over it with my pure pink color. There we go. That's super bright. And that is definitely a Barbie pink. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Ooh, there is one color that I forgot to mention brown forgot to add that sorry guys the only reason i say that is because it might be nice to add a little bit um of a, a like a foresty green or like a a more neutral green um down at the bottom um so it's just a little bit it's just enough to to tint it just a little bit it's still a very much a green color um so we'll want that brown um, I'm, I am going to make it optional though. Like you don't have to have it. So just regular old brown and whatever green you have. And I think I'll throw in some yellow too, just to give me a wider um, variation of greens. So I'll throw that in there too. Oops. All right.
Mm. Now the the grasses down here are very, very abstract, okay? I think we would all go crazy if we tried to draw each and every single individual grass down here. Now, of course, they're gonna have some stems. You know, I am gonna try to draw the stems for, for most of my flowers, you know, probably not all of them, but a good portion of them. But then I'll use the water to dilute it and also spread the green around. And I'll do that with all of my greens. So I just want you to see just how crazy it looks down there. Um, later on, I did also add some oil pastel on top of it. So the oil pastel will help us to define some areas and make some grasses look like actual grasses. Um, but again, the what the the oil pass. I'm sorry, the uh, acrylic paint portion is going to be very abstract and very loose. And I am going to use my tiniest brush for that one. So my smallest round brush is what we're going to want. Now I have to pour out a little bit of green. We're not going to be using too much of it. So a little green there. I've got my brown, so I'm going to pour some of my brown right next to it. I already have some uh, yellow right there, so I can just use that yellow. And we can start off easy. So start off just with the pure green. And again, I am going to water down my green just a little bit by dipping it, dipping my brush in water mm. and just pulling aside some of the green. We can start off with this before we mix in any any other colors. Now I can start off just by giving myself some stems. Go back in. I'm just sort of dragging it down very loosely, very quickly, because I did mention this is all very abstract. This is just a start. And then we're gonna really get a little bit more crazy after we have the stems there. Give you guys another moment. All right, so I have my stems there and I'm gonna take some of my watered down green and we're gonna scribble. See that scribbly motion? It's a big old mess. Or it's about to be a big old mess. Scribble, 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 which means that I'm going side to side, side to side side to side. Some of my lines are definable. Some of them are not. Some of them are not. You'll see that when I flatten my brush out like that, it makes it undefinable. However, when I straighten my brush out like this, I can define all of the grasses. Now that's the part that might drive you a little crazy, maybe can also squish it down like that. The point of this portion right here is just to put some grass back there, put some greenery back there. It's a, a, a base coat, if you will. All of our, our green edges, like this, for example, and things that look a little bit more blotchy right now will become undefinable and it will sink into the background later on once we put our, our other two colors there 
and once we put um, our oil pastels back there. Every once in a while, I'm also going to just throw in some of these little swipes here and there for grasses. Just every once in a while, maybe just in the big spots. That's really all you need them for. There we go. One big splotchy area. And then eventually, you're going to want to maybe add some of that brownish green. So... I have it here on the side so I can scooch some of this aside and then pick up a little bit of green, just a little bit. Just enough to change it into a different color. Well, not change it, uh, tint it into a slightly different color. See that? It's a little bit darker. So now I can go back. I can start to make some definable grasses. Go up and down. It's still watered down a little bit. Kind of make it a little bit choppy. That water does help to spread the paint. So if you feel like your, your uh, brush strokes are too defined, you can always go in and add a little extra water to your paint. And that's gonna help to spread it. So I'm adding some more defined grasses now, right on top of my base coat of green. My grasses are sticking up and sticking out. They're just being grass. We'll even put some up here too. I'm gonna get pretty close to my flowers. I don't want it to, I don't want them to look like they're scared of my flowers. There we go. They're all friends here. Let y'all work on that for a minute before I mix a different um, type of green. Give y'all a few minutes on that. Y'all have questions, concerns. No concerns yet. This is fun, guys. Like, I love the idea of doing a mixed media project. I think it also just makes me happy just having different colors in here too. Like I love having all these different colors around. Anytime you're ready, you can mix a little bit of yellow into your green just to have a brighter green. It's a very bright, happy green. So I'll take, again, my, my uh, thin brush here, my smallest brush. Take a little bit of this yellow, a little bit of green. I've got a nice bright green here, very light color. Go in and do the same thing. Add some grasses, add some scribbles here. Overlap a bunch of things. Anything you've got, overlap it all. If you've ever tried um, painting a landscape, you'll know that you, you have to have the more abstract elements in order to highlight the more um, precise elements in your landscape. 
picture. Mm -hmm. It's how you sort of declutter what you're looking at in front of yourself, in front of yourself. So this is why we make um, this splotchiness of color so that we can go on top of it again and put some more defining features on top of it. Mm. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see some of the that light green in there. There we go. We are going to want this whole area to dry before we put the uh, oil pastels on top. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll jump up here in a moment and we'll put in all of, of this stuff, the, the background flowers. So we'll put in all of that back there. And then we'll actually do the clouds after this, before we jump down here and define our, our flowers. So we'll do this next here. Then we'll jump into the clouds and we'll, we'll finally switch to oil pastels whenever we do the, the clouds. I'm so excited for those clouds. I love like scribbling like little circles. Like that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna scribble little circles in there. Um, I feel like they're just they're just relaxing to do. At least for me, they're very relaxing. Okay. So just like with our our flowers we'll have to do a lighter version of our yellow or, you know, whatever color you have. So I went in and I did my, my light yellow. So whatever light yellow you started out with when you first did your flowers, make some more of that. And then we'll put a bunch of scribblies back here. Now these, these brush strokes are a little bit more like messy signatures. Um, I have a lot of paint on my brush. And again, I'm using my tiny brush for this, I'm using your tiny brush. And I'm making little scribbles like that. And all of my scribbles are gonna overlap. So I'll use my light yellow first, and then I'll go over it again with my dark yellow. So probably have to make some more of the light yellow. So I'm gonna do that. Now, if you happen to have different colored flowers, then do, <clears throat> do the same colors that you use for your flowers. Now, if you're like me and you have uh, some extra colors in there, then pick the color that you have the most of. Most of my flowers are gonna be this, this yellow or even just like this, this yellowy orangey color. So I'm gonna pick yellow because it's simpler that way. And later on, I might just add a few flecks of my, my pink on top of it. So it just a little bit, just enough to match the amounts that are up here. So let's make some more of this yellow, my light yellow. Because I'm I'll, use, uh -huh. I was, I was saying, it, you know, when we use that, um, the flower color is, are we visualizing that the meadow has flowers that go beyond the ones we're seeing? Yes, that that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. We're we're imagining that there are so many flowers back there that they all just sort of blend together, like they they're. There's so many, the, the wind is probably swaying them back and forth, which is why we have the, the very messiness, like all of this movement back here. That's because oh. it's, you see the wind moving it back and forth. So it all just kind of blends together. Thank yeah, you. that's exactly what I was envisioning. When you're ready, pick a spot, any spot, and let's start to squiggle back and forth. See how I'm squiggling up and down? You can absolutely water your paint down just a teensy little bit, just 
just enough to get it flowing a little bit extra. Not a whole lot. Back and forth, back and forth. I'm squishing my brush down in some spots. In some spots, it's it's up and down. It's standing up tall. But in other spots, it's squishing like that. It's wavy. I'm going to get pretty close to my flowers, but maybe not too close. I don't want to cover them. Squiggle back and forth, squish it back and forth. And really, any time you're ready, you can go and you can add the pure version of your color. So just pure yellow right on top of it, following my lines. Pure yellow here, pure yellow there. actually kind of nice to leave some of these areas looking a little bit lighter. I, I personally like the way that looks. That looks lovely. Thank you. They're fun. I love doing these kinds of brush strokes. Now I did mention that I'll probably add just a few little flecks of pink in there because I've got a little bit of pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my brush. And I don't really feel like going through the trouble of making a light pink. So I'm going to see what it looks like with just a pure pink. I like it. It's working. Yeah, I'm happy with it. So same, same kind of energy up here, same kind of blood brush strokes with the pink. Now get ready for oil pastels. Get your oil pastel fingers ready. Get your napkin ready too, because they can kind of get on your fingers a little bit if you're not careful. I, I tend to um, break my oil pastels, so my hands are definitely going to get messy. We'll be using white and purple. Um, optional blue, I think I put a little back there. I put a little bit of teal. I know it's kind of hard to see, but that's a little bit of teal. Um, underneath the cloud in the form of like a swirly thing. Mm. But yeah, just like right there. Uh, I was channeling Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> trying to channel Vincent Van Gogh. So that's what that's about. <laughs> Let's see. Get my little handy dandy set here. So I was not kidding when I told you I break my pastels. So I have my white. I got my purple. Pretty sure I used a light blue. Here it is. Yeah, I'm going to throw it in there. Just why not? Um, any sort of cloud colors you can think of. Um, I mean, gray. Like, this is a very, very light gray. Um, obviously, everybody's uh, oil pastel set is going to be a little bit different. Um, so anything that sort of reminds you of a cloud will, will work just fine. Um, I have this really light gray color here. I'll, I think I'll throw in some gray in there. Um, get creative with it. I mean, if it's something like red, I would stay away from reds, right? Unless, unless you yourself used like sunset colors you know then it just that completely changes it but if it's just like a regular day regular blue sky what colors remind you of clouds so i'm gonna do white i'm gonna do purple i got that light blue that i mentioned the gray i'm probably not gonna use the gray i don't think i need it actually um, I was that's about it mm -hmm. and uh, 
in Washington and I, I went to the Skagit Valley where they have uh, the Tulip Festival and mm -hmm. and there was all gray clouds. <laughs> all gray clouds. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm gonna put gray in. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I, I Man, where, where is the Skagit Valley? Is that on the east side of the state? No, it's on the uh, west side of uh, the Cascades in Washington State. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, I would love to see that. That's so cool that you saw it. Oh yeah, just look up Skagit Tulip Festival and you'll see them. Cool. But I know yeah, I'll you have to do that in real life. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh yes, that's right. I mentioned that I I had a little bit of like a teal thrown in there so I pulled the the teal color out is that I don't know teal or aqua I'm not quite sure but pulled it out so for the clouds um we'll want to blend our darkest color purple so what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice bed of uh white first so we're going to we're going to uh shape our cloud this way with the white first, and then we'll add our our uh, darker color on top, so the, the purple on top of that. And then it's gonna be sandwiched on top with some more white. What we're doing is we're trying to soften the uh, the purple beforehand by putting that, that bed of um, white first, and then um, we'll soften it later on by sandwiching it with another layer of white. So here's what I do. Take your white, got my little thing right here. And I usually like to start in the middle of my cloud. I en envision that I want my cloud to move up around here and maybe, I don't know, maybe go over here. I usually like to start in the middle and I like to do little swirlies and all of my little swirlies are gonna move up and around. Keep on going, keep on shaping. I gotta move my hand around so I can see what's going on underneath it. How much pressure are you using? I'm pressing down pretty hard. Yeah, okay. good question. Because I want um I want it to be, I want the the purple to be slick whenever I put it down. In fact, I'm using such a tiny piece, I have to like flatten it. It definitely helps. So I'm moving from one side to the next. I'm always looking at the shape of my cloud to see what it looks like. I'm and this always is looking dry, from one right? side to the next. Yes, correct. It should be dry. Mm -hmm. These are like lipsticks almost, right? Real oily. Almost, yeah. Not, almost. That, I wear, not that I wear lipstick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know what you mean, though. <laughs> um, beware, though, with oil pastels. Um, I should point out that it looks like I have yellow on here. That's because there were little flecks of yellow on my oil pastel. So um, and I didn't see that beforehand. So now the yellow is embedded into my picture. It's permanent. And that's OK. <laughs> we're just going to run with it. So I just wanted you to know that I didn't intentionally put any yellow in there. Just kind of happened. I like to flatten out the bottom of my clouds. Maybe I'll do another one. Maybe I'll do a nice little cloud over here too. And again, I'm pressing down hard because I want a nice layer of white there. I think that's pretty good. Trying to get those little spots where I see a, a larger amount of the uh, sky peeking through. But it honestly doesn't have to be totally covered with the white. If you're lucky, maybe the, the paint set that you got might be um, a little bit of a, a higher quality and therefore you'd be able to see more of the white. For me, that's not quite the case. 
but that's okay. Once you're ready, um, you can start to grab your purple or your, your other dark color of choice. And I'm going to start once again in the middle of my cloud and I'm going to swirl it in again, but I'm not going to press down very hard because this color is, it's pretty strong as is. So I'm not pressing down nearly as hard as I did with the white one, but I'm still doing the, the tight little circles. Still started in the middle and I'm still gonna work my way outward. Um, however, I'm gonna stick mostly to the middle because whenever we put the white, the, the, the other layer of white to sandwich on top of it, it's gonna spread the oil pastel even further. So I'm gonna stick to mostly the middle. So that's a good amount right there. Once again, go over here, start it in the middle, move it on out towards the edges, but I'm not really getting close to the edges. And again, I'm not really pressing down hard. Should feel kind of slick now, since we have that nice little layer of white underneath. Now, this is also where you, you could add other colors if you want. So um, if you happen to have a blue, like I had this blue, you can add it here as well. See that? Added it right there. Because it's a light color, it'll blend in together. So there's a little bit of optional blue. I mentioned earlier that I also had like a really light teal color, super light. If you wanted to, you can add that in as well. It just gives your clouds a little bit more depth. Can't really see the teal too much actually. What if I were to add a little pink in there? Nah, that's not cloud colors. I will refrain for now <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> okay, let's um, start to sandwich this cloud now. We're gonna go back to our white and again, start right where we've been starting. And now you can see that it's starting to blend whatever is underneath it. See that? It, it'll move it a little bit, and I may add a little bit more purple, but we'll see how it goes. See that blending power we have now? And I'm still pressing down hard with the white. Not super hard, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and there we go. Still making those tight swirls. Jump over to the other side. Blend those in, and I'll definitely add some more purple. So for me, I can add more purple a little closer to the edges. How are y'all doing? Doing okay? <laughs> Loving so this. Yay! So quiet, so I had to ask. Yeah, I love pastels so You're much for this reason. You're busy creating. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I love pastels for this reason because there's there's so much blending you can do. It's like blendable crayons. So I had just added extra purple on top of that because I felt like it needed more. So again, I can do the exact same thing. Go over it with this white. So, still doing those tight circles. Mm -hmm. Hannah, I'm getting like these um, buildup of wax from the crayon thing. It's all over like my painting. Like what's on your hands? Is that natural? Is that? Oh, like these little bits that are flaking yeah. off. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah, that's natural. Um, you can actually, 
either wipe it off with your hand or just get um, like a dry brush. Okay. Just a dry brush and just kind of wipe it off. Okay. Lightly. So yeah, that, that happens. Yeah. No worries with that. We are almost done, very close to being done. Um, what I want to do now is I want to take that brown and I want to start to make some centers. So the middle of our flower, whatever brown you have, I happen to choose a darker brown. So let's see what I've got. This looks like the darkest brown that I have. So I'm gonna take this guy and right in the center of each of my flowers, make a circle. Now some sunflowers, they have um, really wide circles like that, like wide centers like that. So it's up to you which type you wanna do some flowers, some sunflowers have the really small ones, like that one. Again, it's completely up to you which one you want to do. I think I want to have a little variation of both. Now the addition of these oil pastels is what really makes it mixed media. Now we can say we've done a mixed media project in class. I love them. I love my little guys, my little flowers. The step that comes after the circles there is gonna be defining the shapes of your petals now. So this is where you can take any one of your pastels that um, maybe closely matches what you have on the paper. So in the original picture, this outline that you see here, it's a, a light orange. So I had chosen this light orange to outline all of my petals with. Um, again, it just depends on what you have on your set. You're more than welcome to use, um, what is it? Uh, pure, pure orange, if you wanna use pure orange, um, maybe even pure brown, like a light brown, if you have a brown, that might be appropriate as well because it is a sunflower. Um, what else? Like I could technically maybe even use this honey mustard color even. Let's see. I want to show you what that looks like because I want to see what it looks like. That's not bad. This uh, brown honey mustard color looks pretty good when I outline it. You've already seen what it looks like when I outlined with the light orange. Let's see what that looks like there. Um, at least with my set, it doesn't really, sh like the, the yellow that, that, that's here, the light yellow, um, doesn't really show up very well, but your set might be different. So you, you'll just have to test it out. So as you can see, can't see anything of this color. So I'm not going to do that. And actually, even this darker yellow doesn't quite show up. So I've got to do this light orange. Just depends on you and your set. Since I have these pink flowers, I am going to um, maybe outline it with this pink or even a purple even. Purple might, might work nicely. For some of these tinier flowers, you may not be able to outline every single little um, uh, petal, but that's okay. Just keep on going.
maybe I'll do purple for my pink flowers. There we go. I have like this lavender color. That looks pretty good. I actually really like how this looks when I don't quite make it around every single petal and like it's on the grass. I just like the way that color looks. Very last thing that I will show you how to do is um, we'll put extra grasses down here. So extra greens, maybe even a little bit of brown down there. And that will be the last of it. Now for the grasses down here, um, I happen to have a variation of colors. Like I've got this interesting looking grayish color, grayish brown. I have this sage green. I even have a really light green right here. Uh, I have a ton. Actually, I actually have a lot more than I thought I did. Um, choose any of them. I'll just choose the sage green just because I really want to see what it looks like here. And start to make some defining grassy shapes. The same way you did it with the acrylics, we're just doing it with oil pastels. You put some out here, or I even have some coming up above my flowers. Say maybe maybe pick two colors at least. I mean, of course, you're welcome to do more than that. But I'd say maybe at least two colors and then you should be set. Anything that reminds you of grass. Oh, here we go. I have this really dark green. Love this color. And again, I'm scribbling with this. It's a really dark color. Is there anyone out there who would love to share? Yes, this is our favorite time of the program. <laughs> yes. It is. It really is. Yes. And I moved anyone? To I Excellent. am ready. Andrea, come on down. There she is. There we go. Oh, gosh. Those, I'm so proud of you and your scribbles. I love them. Oh, that's so scenic. It so is. I decided not to go around them. I don't know, like, the outline on this particular one. I just didn't like the way it looked. So I decided not to outline all of them. All I right. like distant flowers. I beautiful. Mm -hmm. I honestly love it though. I honestly love that outline around it. Um, I think that's what makes it really stand out though. I love that. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And the uh the horizon line here, I see that your horizon line is more um curved, but I love that. I love that hell. feature. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I so when you started putting the the flowers in the background, I didn't have any room, so I had to paint more green <laughs> oh yeah that makes sense yeah and it worked so that out might that was a happy accident up like that <laughs> yeah very happy accident though <laughs> worked out it gives Great a job that, it gives a <laughs> it's pretty yeah what else like to share i love it thank you andrea thank, oh, thank you, you anna <laughs> There we go, Laurel. Oh, I see you. Go. Oh, oh my, gosh. my gosh. See, wow. That's what you were flowers on. almost look real. They do I know. look real. Yeah. Just the, the sky, though. Like, I'm just so um, captivated by the sky up there. It's so pretty. Yes, I just want to run into it. <laughs> I just want to open up my hand and just run. Mm -hmm. Those clouds remind me of um, clouds that you would see in, in West Texas, how they're so grand and so beautiful. Good point, mm -hmm. Hannah. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there oh, we go. Nice. See, nice. I love that we have colors. such a different perspective too. Oh, I love orange. Just those clouds are just gorgeous yeah. too. They're like dual color clouds. They're so it's pretty. much better than mine. No, Laurel's is much better. It's just different. Oh my god! They no way! The yeah, oh, you they're did so a great lovely. job. Mm -hmm. like, those flowers especially i'm loving like the one in the middle like the big ones you did are just gorgeous i like it I like very yeah. much different color i figured yeah. i love it great job. i like the orange with the light bright yellow background mm -hmm. those are nice all right thank Sarah, you so much i'm bringing you up i'm finding you there you are hey there oh, we go. So That's so beautiful. It was really fun. I, I love it. the perspective of it. Oh, oh, so oh look at that one. I oh, know. That looks so good. Oh, that oh, is fantastic. Tell them about what it is. What, the, yeah. what this part I'm here. is. Quick. Yeah, what's that? You want That's to the smell of the flower. Yeah. Oh, oh you wow. drew the no. smell. I know. I, I thought that, that was really cool. Sense. Yeah. Uh, what a good idea. You did really well with all of it. Fantastic. It fun. Do you want to do you. more art in the future? Yeah. Nice. Yes. That's exactly what we want to hear. Yes. Great <laughs> job. You should be so proud yes. of yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to sign them. Don't yes, forget don't forget the yes. artist. Marcy, I've seen you up there. I'm coming. <laughs> Great job. Beautiful guys. Marcy. Oh, wow. Look oh. at that. I oh. see so much depth here. I like know. I'm loving your flowers too. I got a late start. That that is more you're than caught okay. up fast. Yeah, I caught up I real love fast. Thank you. Can we see your clouds again? Yeah, those clouds are yeah. beautiful. Gosh, I just, I love the, the, what is it? The, the stuff back here, the flowers that are in the background. Mm -hmm. I just love the placement of it, the way you put it in and the way it looks next to your cloud or below your cloud. Um, mm -hmm. You did a really good job with it. Thank you. Yeah, the shapes yeah. and ever. Oh my gosh, such so fantastic. And Sharon, Lovely. I saw you... Let me see. Oh, there we go, wow. Sharon. I love it. Your clouds almost wow. look like they're glowing. <laughs> I know. Like it's something in the way that you you put the the dark in the middle, like the way you blended it all out too. It looks really nice. I love that. And um, like wow. the flowers are beautiful. Yeah, your flowers, they look like they have some dimension to them. I know. Yeah. Like they're facing all different ways and all different directions. Yeah, they are. Very lively. Yeah, lively is the good word. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you as always, fantastic. I love it. Leslie, I see you. You are a little blurred. We can't see the oh. paint just yet. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it has the, the blurry it's filter It's kind of on. a witness protection program, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Le Leslie, right. can you take oh there it is. If you put it back near your head, we can see it. Yeah, if you yeah, put it your, yeah. Okay, hold it, back, still. hold it still. No, a little closer to no. your head, so further back. back. It up. Yeah. yeah, right there. Stop yeah. and hold it still. Hold it. No, nope. Okay, no, nope. that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 we got it. We got it. Yeah, if it's right hold by your right face. There. If it's right by your face, there right we go. Right there. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I saw, I saw, yeah, there we go, beautiful. your flowers. Oh, I love, I love how green too. it is. Uh-huh. Like, it looks like there's there's actually mountains in the background. I don't know if that's what you intended, uh, but I I'm love the put, texture. I'm going to put the bicycle on it tomorrow. Ooh. Oh, nice. Um, that's gonna be cute that's oh, gonna that's be really gonna nice so good yeah your brush uh -huh. strokes the texture oh and the color selection you did the the depth yep. to it yep fantastic thank you thank you leslie fantastic leslie <laughs> beautiful uh, awesome marianne, marianne yes oh my God. God. there we go right that is i know <laughs> Like, this oh. is a very happy, bright painting. Yes, <laughs> it's just very happy. happy. 
it made yep. me happy too. And Yay. I, I, every time I do something, I impress myself. So um, you should be you. impressed. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. You should Good be job. impressed. Yeah. This You're, was it just fun. This was such fun. Thank you. I just Thank feel like you. your your flowers are are singing right now because you're so happy. so happy. You can't be They're... sad looking at that shit. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful happy. job. Beautiful Thank job, Marianne. This was great fun. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, did I miss anybody? Does anyone else want to share? So Jeanette, there we go. Oh, wow, the pink. look at all the pink. Yes. That, that is, is so pretty. <laughs> Jeanette, if you're not careful, the Barbie producers are going to come come knocking for you to design the sets for Barbie too. Yep. <laughs> that looks yep. like perfect. <laughs> I love I love the yeah, the I love the way you did the outlines of your flowers too. Just the way you mm -hmm. put it in there is so nice. Well, you know what happened? I didn't have a pastel or acrylic paints. So this was all the water things that you sent to us from la for last month. Oh, oh very uh, cool. Yeah, it yeah. looks like the way you, you painted it, it looks like there's so oh. much texture to it. I wouldn't have known that there wasn't. <laughs> oh, no, but well, see, but those, no. those pencils, those pencils work pretty well because you can make a line. Yeah. Or you, you, or you you know, wash out the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That well, was, it worked really well for you on the bottom did. too. Like, did the, you, could you could you tell those were clouds, dark yeah. clouds? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. yeah, they were dark clouds. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. But I like the, the ladies how they were able to get that the depth in the distant flowers. I think those were very pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Great yeah. job, Jeanette. Yeah, thank you. Did I miss anybody? Did Holly, Holly, you had Holly, to okay, yeah. yes. Yay! Oh. Oh. See, look at that. Like, I love the, um, the, what is it? Andrea, you had that too, where it looks more rounded up in yeah. the sky. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving, like, all of the, the texture that I see and the outlines that you did with the, the oil pastel down there at the bottom. I love the way that looks. And also, Hannah, I see such a good use of color. The, yes. the color selections yes. were done so well. Very mm. complimentary. Oh, you did fantastic. <laughs> you should be really proud of yourself. Yeah. Yep, Great your lines job. are so lovely. Thank you. Great job. Woohoo. Beautiful. Guys, these are so lovely. They're so good. And Hannah, my favorite thing is always <laughs> seeing them because everyone has their mm -hmm. own taken perspective on it and yep. does something different. And I feel like, you know, you you teach an outline, but then we learn something of oh, curved and this. It's so exciting. I love it. Alexa, I wanted to thank you for getting me in. I know I was a bit late, but I, I couldn't find the push button to enter. I... You are so good. We are just happy that you came and we are always here to help. Um, Hannah, I just want to check before I say something uh -huh. real quick. Did anyone else want to share? If not, sharing is really optional. We do not require it, Ooh, but we do like to brag. Kim, okay. Kim, Kim, of course. There we go. Oh, I love, I love your, love your colors. I know you did the pink. Like it looks so full. It looks like it's had a really good rain recently. Yes. <laughs> and now we have a huge field full of so many flowers. And yes. your your color too. I love that you kept everything really light. I feel yeah. like it works so well with your brush strokes and with the greenery at the bottom. Like the oh. the that particular green that you use looks really nice with all of your flowers. It does. And how it looks in the background with all the flowers, your little touches of pink yeah. too. That looks so realistic to me. Yeah. Oh, oh my no. gosh. I could smell that photo, the painting. I could just smell it. I had yep. a good teacher. <laughs> You did so well. And did you use a um a canvas for this too? I did because that's what I had. Nice. So I haven't ever painted a canvas before. So I like the nice. texture that the canvas created. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it it worked really well for you. It looks really good. Like the 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 shape of it too looks really good. 
Fantastic, Kim. And once Yay. again, we are very happy that you have graced us with your fantastic presence again in the art class. So, Hannah, great job tonight. Fantastic work, everyone. Thanks. We are all very proud of you always. I'll, usually after we touch base after one of these classes, we're like, can you believe me? <laughs> it gets me so excited. Do you want us to still send you pictures of it? Photos yes, of yes. So what I was going to announce is I am behind on updating the Ancan Art Gallery. We've had a lot of big projects going on. We are still keeping it updated, though. And so if you would like to submit your photo for the Ancan Art Gallery, please email me or Hannah. You have Hannah's email and mine is Alexa, A-L-E-X-A. Yes at ancan, a -N -C -A -N org, and we would love to profile and even um we still love to see them again because we see different details oh we just love it mm -hmm. um hannah i don't think we have any other specific announcements will we be having a class um, next month yeah we'll, we'll have another class next month um third thursday of the month unless anything changes i don't have anything planned that day um if you could please fill out the after class survey the post class survey that would be amazing you should find it in your email as well um but other than that um i'm thinking since we have oil pastels maybe we'll do an actual oil pastel project next time so Perfect. um that's yeah, yeah. And you can always, I haven't made this announcement in a while, you can always send us suggestions mm -hmm. or what you would like to see because we actually have taken a lot of suggestions and, and used it to create yep. projects. So if and there's if, anything yeah. you want to do, let us know. Mm -hmm. Thank you all again for, for this opportunity. No, of thank course. you so much for coming. And we thank you so much that you trust us to come and spend an evening with us. And we understand mm -hmm. what a privilege that is. And we want to give a big thank you to everyone here. And Hannah, I I was a clairvoyant, I guess, because everything was turned out to be a work of art. So I'm happy. Woohoo! Yeah. You I'm guys did a right wonderful here. job. Fantastic job, everybody. And good night.